Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my videos. So in this video, I wanted to go over primarily gameplay tags and why you may or may not want to use them, but also how they relate or how they differ from something like an enum or a Boolean, which are sort of other ways to accomplish the same thing. Um, so it's more just going to be an informational video. So hopefully people can come to their own conclusions on which method is best for their game. So in order to demonstrate this, I've set up a little scenario here. We have three items for the purpose of this explanation. You can see on the left, we have a pineapple. In the middle, we have a water bottle. And on the right, we have a coin. So there's three different types of items um, in this video that we're gonna be talking about. And I'll show you how to implement them using Booleans, enums, and gameplay tags. And then you can kind of decide which one you think is best for your game because they're kind of all valid to some degree. So the left one is a pineapple and I have it set as a food. And I'll show you that in a second in the code, but if I walk up and I collect it, at the top left it says item consumed. And that's because I have food marked as consumable. And same with the drink. If I walk up to it, even though it's a drink as opposed to a food, it will still say item consumed because I can consume drinks and I can consume like solid foods. And then this last one is obviously not a food. So when I walk up to it, it says quest item collected. So those are my three types. I have quest items, I have food, which is like solid food, and then I have drinks. Um, and again, this is just an example to show you the different uses of gameplay tags, enums, and booleans, but obviously you could, you know, rework this to be what are, whatever type of items you want to have in your game. So let's just take a look at this kind of behind the scenes and I'll try to explain my thought process on each. So these are my items here. Um, let's just look at the pineapple first. So in the details panel, um, we're just gonna go through this one option at a time. Cause like I said, there's three options. The first one's Boolean. So let's just look at this one first and we'll leave these other two collapsed. Um, Cause right now the code is just running this Boolean code and it's pretty straightforward. There's just three booleans, and you can select if you want an item to be a food, a drink, or a quest item. So the pineapple is set to food. The water bottle is set to drink, as you see right here. And the coin is set to quest item. So this is the approach that most people take when they're first learning how to program. And it's not necessarily a bad approach um, because it's very simple and easy to understand, but there are some downsides to it. So the main downside being um, if you want these things to be mutually exclusive, then this isn't the best approach because there's really nothing stopping somebody from coming in here, like a developer coming in here and saying that this coin is now a quest item, a drink, and a food, which really doesn't make any sense because um, the idea is that the item is either a quest item, a food, or a drink. You know, if you had other options like a weapon, you wouldn't want to say something is a weapon and a drink, right? I mean, maybe you do for some crazy game, but for the purpose of explanation, Generally, your item types, the high-level types, it's either one or the other. So if you do Booleans like this, you kind of run into weird issues in the code where if somebody like accidentally clicks multiple of these checkboxes, then it's, it's very bug-prone, right? Because ideally, when you're configuring your items, it shouldn't even be possible to configure something incorrectly as a general rule of thumb. So I'll just show you guys the code real quick. Uh, in case anybody's curious, it's very simple for this one. So again, over here, I have this broken down to option one, option two, option three. So let's just look at option one right now, because that's the Booleans. So very straightforward. Um, I have this function here that the player is calling when he overlaps with it to check if it's a consumable. And all this is doing is just returning true if it's a food or a drink. And then likewise, if it's a quest item, it just returns true if it's a quest item. Pretty self-explanatory. So that's one option, um, very simple. But let's move on to a different one, and we'll, we will definitely get to gameplay tags here soon. But I just wanted to talk about enums as well, because they kind of fall into this realm um, with with bulls and gameplay tags as well, and, and they're definitely a viable option. So option two is the same thing, but using enums. So if you don't know what an enum is, it's short for enumeration. And I've already gone ahead and created one. Let me see if I can find where I put that. I believe it is items. Here it is. So if you don't know how to create an enum, all you do is right click and go to blueprint and hit enumeration. And then it'll create a file like this. And then when you open it up, it will be empty, but you can hit this add enumerator button at the top 
and it will add entries here. So I've already added one for food, drink, and quest item. So this looks very familiar to the Boolean approach in the sense that we have the three options still. But the nice thing about enumerations is if we go back to our pineapple here and we're on option two now, you can see instead of option one where we had three different options, when we add the enum variable to our blueprint, which I'll show you right here real quick, just in case you're curious, we see option two right here. We just have a E item type variable and it's set to instance editable so we can edit it. So when we're using an enum, the nice thing is, is that this dropdown limits us to only selecting one. So there's no possible way that a developer or a designer could come in and say that this pineapple is both a quest item and a food, or you know a food and a weapon, or some weird combination that isn't supposed to be possible. So you see this one's set to food, this one's set to drink, and this one's set to quest item. So this is a pretty good approach for something like this. Whenever you have like mutually exclusive things, instead of using a bunch of different booleans, using enums is a great approach for this. So if we go back and we look at our item, and we look at our option two functions, which are just the same same functions, just written with enums. So if we look on consumable, we have um, returning true if the item type is set to food or the item set is set to drink. And for the quest item, we just return true if the item type is equal to quest item. So it's very similar to the booleans. It's very easy to use in code. Um, but like I said, it limits you to just one option per item type, which is great in our case because that's exactly what we want. So I don't want to say, I'm, I'm going to talk about gameplay tags next. Um, some people say like gameplay tags are superior to enums. Um, I tend to disagree with that because it really depends on your use case. Because for a use case like this, I would argue that the enums are a perfect approach because we have exactly what we want. The designer can't mess it up. And there's really no reason to make it more complicated than it needs to be. But if your game is more complex than something simple like this, then you might want to look into gameplay tags. So let's just take a look at what they look like first, and then I'll show you how to set them up. So I'm going to click back on the pineapple here. So option three, you can see, instead of having booleans or an enum, I just have this gameplay tags. And what this is, is it's actually a gameplay tags container. And I'll show you that real quick in case you're not curious, because this is how you would work with gameplay tags if you wanted to use gameplay tags on items or any other blueprint actor in your game. So inside of here, let's look at the option three category down here. So all I've done is I've added this variable and I've named it gameplay tags. And the type is set to, if it's gonna show me, it's set to gameplay tag container, okay? So there's gameplay tags and then there's gameplay tag containers. And the difference is a gameplay tag is a single tag and a gameplay tag container is obviously a container or a list or an array or a collection of tags. So if we go back to our pineapple here in the world, um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna exit this out so you can see what it looks like. So by default, your gameplay tag container will look like this. And the neat thing about tags is that you can add as many tags as you want to to it, and there's really no limit about this. So this can be a good or a bad thing. Um, and this is why some people say gameplay tags are really great, and this is why other people say like they don't really like them very much, because they kind of let you do whatever you want. So you can see. When I click on this, it pops up all the gameplay tags, and these gameplay tags can have subcategories to them, and I'll show you how to add them in a second. But you can see I've added biome and item, um, and these other ones were already here. But you can see under item, you can see you can actually expand it, so you have it's like a hierarchy. So we have item, consumable, drink, food, and then quest. So drink and food are under consumable. So the neat thing about this is you can still do the same thing we did before. So we can say, you know, the pineapple is a food and we can see that the water bottle is set to drink and that the coin is set to quest item. But like I was saying, the interesting thing about this is you can come in here and you can add as many gameplay tags as you want. So if you wanted to have like a biome in your game, you know, like desert, forest, wetlands, and maybe certain items belong to certain biomes, then you could also add, for example, maybe the pineapple is part of the forest biome. Then you can see that this pineapple has the forest biome tag, and it has, also has the item consumable food tag. 
And you could do this for other things as well. You could give it tags about like the rarity of it or you know the, the efficiency of it or who can who can collect it because you can make whatever tags you want. So let me show you how to do that real quick. So if you go up to the project settings, there's a section right at the top called gameplay tags. And then if you hit this little gear manage gameplay tags button here, it'll pop up all the gameplay tags in your game. So you can see, you can kind of start expanding these and you can see the ones that I've added here. And if you want to add a new one, it's just as simple as coming up here to the top and start typing it out. So if we wanted to add another type of item, so maybe we wanted a weapon, we could do item. Um, oh wait, that's the search box, oops. I think you gotta press add, there we go. And say item dot weapon. And, oh yeah, I forgot. You have to select the source, which is just where they're stored at. This is the default storage location, so I'm just gonna select this. And then we hit add tag. So you can see what this does is it adds the weapon gameplay tag under the item and it adds it in the correct hierarchy. So if I, if I uh, minimize item, it also minimizes that. And if I wanted to add something other under item, I could just do item dot weapon dot, you know, sword, for example. And then if I come back to my level, if I wanted to make a sword, all I would have to do is come over here and change this from food to sword. But I'm gonna set this back um, just so I can continue with the tutorial and show you what the code looks like. So we're gonna set this back to food. And again, this one's set to drink and this one's set to quest. So just to show you the code, since I've been doing that for the other ones. So again, it's quite simple, but it's a, it looks a little bit different. So for option three, for checking if somebody's a consumable using the gameplay tags, there's these handy little functions. There's like has tag or has any tag or has all tags. If you just drag off of a gameplay tag container and types for has, you can see that they're listed here. So it should be pretty obvious what they do. Um, so for example, for the checking if it's consumable, we could check if it has the um, food tag or the drink tag. But the nice thing about gameplay tags is that you can actually check the kind of the parent tag. So we don't really care what type of consumable it is. We just care that it's a consumable. And so if we were to later add other consumable items to our game under that item.consumable tag, this code wouldn't need to get update because it's just saying, does this gameplay tag contain any type of item that has the consumable tag? It doesn't care if it's food or drink or something else. And that's what that, this, that's what this, it's blah. <laughs> that's what this exact match Boolean does. Um, if you check it, then it's gonna only return true if the tag is exactly set to item.consumable. So it would not return true for item.consumable.food, for example. And then for the quest item one, it's quite simple. If it's a quest item, if it has this tag. And I'll just wanna show you guys this real quick, um, with these other ones. If you wanted to do something where it's like, you know, is this a consumable item that's in the desert? You could do as any tags. And then this will want an other container. So I think you can just drag off this and say, make a gameplay tag. Yeah, make literal gameplay tag container. And then over here, you can select the ones you want. So we would say, is this, what did I say? I think I said a consumable that was in the desert. So we add that one, and then we'll also add the biome desert. So this will just return true if it has all of these tags. So the neat thing about this is that, you know, you can you can really ho hopefully see the potential in, the, in these gameplay tags in terms of what you can do. But I do wanna say that the downside to this is that um, if you turn everything in your game into a gameplay tag, um, it can get quite confusing because it, it's just a little difficult to understand the code sometimes if everything is tags. And it's also a little easy to mess up because you could very easily give an item some weird tag that it's not supposed to have or some weird combinations of tag that's not supposed to have. So it sort of allows you to shoot yourself in the foot, but it's at the benefit of getting a very dynamic system. So my advice between gameplay tags and enums is I would lean towards using enums until it becomes too much of a headache. 
And at that point, you can switch to gameplay tags, if that makes sense. Again, that's just my advice. Um, so do, do with it what you will. And one other thing I wanted to mention here, because um, this kind of confused me when I first started learning about gameplay tags, there are tags on actors as well. So if you click on like any any actor in the game, it doesn't have to be one of these, but any actor in the game, and you come over here to tags, you can see here's my tags that we added. But there's also actor tags. So these are not at all the same thing as gameplay tags, but they sort of work in the same way. Um, but they're not quite as efficient because you can see if you hit the plus button here, these tags are just strings. So you could say, um, you know, item here, or you could say, you know, this has the tag of, you know, desert or whatever, whatever you want to write here. You know, you can just literally write whatever you want. Um, and those are in no way, shape or form connected to the gameplay tags. If you try to use one of these, you know, gameplay tag functions to find one of those tags, it's not going to work. The way you find those those tags is using um, things like does actor, uh, actor has tag. Yeah, there's this, and I think you can even access it by here. So there's two options. You can say get tags, and this will return to you that array of tags, or you can say actor has tags, or actor has tag, and you can search for a specific tag. So you might be thinking, well, why don't we just use this instead of gameplay tags? Um, and you could, but the th thing that's different and nice about gameplay tags is that it lets you do a hierarchy. So remember, if we go back to here, the manage gameplay tag section, it lets you have this nice hierarchy where it's like items and then consumable is under items and then drink is under consumable. But with these tags, um, you really can't you really can't do that. There's no option for that. So I would my advice would be pretty much never use the actor tags unless it's for something like, you know, for debugging in the editor. Um, I would never, yeah, basically never suggest using actor tags. If you're gonna use tags, use gameplay tags. Um, but in my opinion, the simplest approach is usually enums, um, just because it kind of prevents you from doing things that you really shouldn't be doing. But anyways, I hopefully that sort of cleared things up. I know this video is a little bit of just kind of rambling. Um, but I wanted to explain that because I've been using gameplay tags lately quite a bit and they're cool, but you got to be careful with them. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next video.